Previously, I mentioned that it's possible to use all these controllers with SoundWeb London. Now let's go into a little more detail about each one. A Windows-based PC running our software can be used as a controller, which means you can use a mouse, keyboard, or PC touchscreen as the human interface. Typically, the software runs custom panels tailored for the end user. Custom panels running in our software can range from simple to elaborate, depending only on the needs of the end user. You can even set up usernames and passwords for multiple end users, giving each their own unique level of access to the system. Another controller option for SoundWeb London is using iPads, iPad Minis, iPhones, or iPod Touches running the app HiQnet Motion Control. HiQnet Motion Control is available in iTunes for about $10. Now, this $10 fee is per Apple iTunes account, meaning if you have, for example, three iPads, two iPad Minis, and one iPhone, all registered under the same account, you would just need to spend $10, not $60 and you could install the app onto all six devices. Interaction with iTunes is only necessary when initially purchasing the app. After that, you use our software running on a Windows-based PC to design the iOS control panel and then send it directly to the iOS device. At that point, the iOS device is a functional controller and, like every other controller, it will work with or without the PC being present on the network. Multiple iOS control panels can even be loaded to a single iOS device. The end user can then switch between control panels on that device using two methods. A two-finger horizontal swipe or double tapping and then selecting a thumbnail of the desired control panel. Also, a single iOS control panel can even be designed just once within our software and then loaded to multiple iOS devices. Sending many panels to one device, one to many, many to many, one to one, it's all possible and easily done. Ethernet-based third-party controllers from control companies such as AMX can be used to control SoundWeb London devices over Ethernet using the SoundWeb London specific control protocol called Direct Inject on port 1023 and or using the full HiQnet control protocol on port 3804. We have an extensive tool set in our software to easily discover and even export to a spreadsheet the control commands needed for your third-party controller. We also have comprehensive protocol guides for both Direct Inject and HiQnet. The Blue 10 is a 3-gang US touchscreen Ethernet wall controller. It has a single Ethernet port for configuration, control, monitoring, and optional PoE powering. It can also be powered via an external power supply. The Blue 10 is available in black, white, and blue. The 128 by 64 pixel monochromatic touchscreen can display custom text and graphics. You can set up up to 100 pages on the touchscreen, each of which can have up to 8 buttons. The rotary encoder is programmable as a volume control. The two physical buttons are not programmable, instead they are used for menu navigation. The Blue 10 allows password protection. Trusted end users can use the touchscreen to enter the password. And it's even possible to set up multiple passwords for varied levels of access to the system. The Blue 8 V2 is a 3-gang US Ethernet wall controller. It has a single Ethernet port for configuration, control, monitoring, and optional PoE powering. It can also be powered via an external power supply. The Blue 8 V2 is available in black and white. The Blue 8 V2 has four programmable LED backlit push buttons, 
a programmable push button slash encoder for source selection surrounded by eight LEDs for indication, another programmable encoder for volume control, and one programmable nine segment LED meter for showing a bouncing audio signal. Also, while the right encoder is in use, the LED meter temporarily stops bouncing and becomes a static volume level indicator. All 21 LEDs on the Blue 8 V2 are multicolor, capable of eight different colors. The Blue 8 V2 can operate in single page mode, four page mode, or eight page mode. In single page mode, the buttons, encoders, and LEDs are individually programmable. This is useful, for example, for preset recall, source selection, volume control, and metering for a single zone. In four page mode, the four buttons are non programmable. Instead, they allow navigation between up to four different pages, each of which can have unique parameter assignments on the other controls. This is useful, for example, for source selection, volume control, and metering for up to four different zones. In eight page mode, the left encoder is non programmable. Instead, it allows navigation between up to eight different pages each of which can have unique parameter assignments on the other controls. This is useful, for example, for preset recall, volume control, and metering for up to eight different zones. The Blue 8 V2 also offers password protection. Trusted end users can enter a pin on the four buttons to make the controller functional. The Contrio Ethernet wall controllers are available in four different models, the ECV, EC4B, EC4BV, and EC8BV. Each has a single Ethernet port for configuration, control, monitoring, and PoE powering. They're available in black and white, and each is available in US Decora and EU form factor. They contain various combinations of fully programmable rotary encoders, multicolor encoder rings, multicolor push buttons, and multicolor LCD screens. All multicolor elements are capable of eight different colors. And three of the four models offer password protection, wherein a trusted end user can enter a PIN using the push buttons. Although PIN entry is impossible on the model without push buttons, that model, like the other three, can still be remotely locked and unlocked by other controllers. The ECV has a single rotary encoder, which can be rotated for controlling a continuous parameter such as a volume. It can also be pressed in for recalling a preset or controlling a binary parameter such as a mute. The multicolor encoder ring can indicate mute status, a static volume setting, or even a bouncing audio meter. The EC4B has four multicolor buttons for preset recall, source selection, or control of binary parameters such as mutes. Each button can be accompanied by a graphic or two lines of custom text within the multicolor LCD screen, which is 64 by 128 pixels in total. The EC4BV is a combination of the ECV and the EC4B. The EC4BV could be used, for example, for source selection and volume control in a single zone. Additionally, the EC4BV supports multiple modes of operation. Similar to the multiple modes of operation on the Blue 8 V2, this means the encoder and ring can be reassigned on the fly to control and indicate different parameters depending on which button is selected. This means you can use this, for example, as a four zone volume controller, or even as a four channel mixer. The EC8BV is a little larger than the others, it's two gang, but it's still a single controller with a single Ethernet port. It's similar to the EC4BV, except it has twice the number of buttons and LCD screens. And it too supports multiple modes of operation meaning the encoder, ring, and even certain buttons can be reassigned on the fly to control different parameters depending on which button is selected. There are several ways you can put this to use, including source select and volume control for a single zone, source select and volume control for four zones, 
volume control for eight zones, a four channel mixer for four zones, or you can even mix and match these ideas. All of these controllers are Ethernet based. Therefore, they control and monitor the SoundWeb London in real time through its Ethernet port, typically traveling through one or more standard network switches to get there and back. PoE is optionally used to power the Blue 10 and Blue 8 V2, whereas it's always used to power the Contrio wall controllers. So make sure you have a PoE enabled network switch or PoE injectors if you plan on using the Contrio wall controllers. And if you plan on using iOS devices running HiQNet motion control, make sure there's a wireless access point on the Ethernet network, because these devices do not have wired Ethernet ports, only Wi-Fi. Serial RS-232 based third-party controllers can control and monitor SoundWeb London devices using the same fundamental commands as those used with Ethernet based third-party controllers, except these commands would exist as serial strings delivered to the SoundWeb London serial port. Now let's say you have a third-party controller with just a serial port, and it needs to control multiple SoundWeb London devices. No problem. Connect it to any SoundWeb London serial port, and commands pertaining to the other SoundWeb London devices are automatically packetized and forwarded over the Ethernet network to those devices as needed. No serial hub required. Contact closures, resistor ladders, and analog potentiometers, as described previously, can control SoundWeb London through the GPI ports. So you could even go to an electronics store and purchase any of these components and a job box, and you could assemble your own custom physical controller with buttons, pots, selectors, and GPO-driven LEDs and relays. Or, if you don't feel like going through all that effort, you could just order a prefabricated GPI controller from BSS. The 9012 contains a single 5 position resistor ladder and a single analog potentiometer. Therefore, it requires two GPI ports per controller. This is useful for source selection of up to five sources and volume control. The Blue 3 is the EU version of the 9012. The 9015 contains a single 8 position resistor ladder and two contact closures. Therefore, it requires three GPI ports per controller. This is useful for source selection of up to eight sources and bump up, bump down volume control. You can even use this as a multi-zone volume controller. The Blue 6 is the EU version of the 9015. The Contrio ACV is a single gang US decor wall controller and it contains a single analog potentiometer. Therefore, it requires a single GPI port per controller. This is useful for volume control. The Contrio AC5S contains a single five position resistor ladder. Therefore, it requires a single GPI port per controller. And this is useful for source selection of up to five sources. The ACV and AC5S are available in both black and white, and in both US Decora and EU form factor. As described previously, you can program the front and rear panel locate button so it gives basic push button control of any parameter within the design. As you might recall, some devices have two locate buttons, one on the front and one on the rear. It's worth noting that both buttons are identical and it's not possible to program them differently from one another. 
The SoundWeb London does not differentiate between the two, so you should plan accordingly. And please also note that any locate button found on a controller, for example, the Blue 8 V2, is not programmable in this way. Only the rack mountable processors contain custom programmable locate buttons. So again, you should plan accordingly. DTMF control allows you to use any phone in the world as a 12 button SoundWeb London controller. This is possible due to a lesser known but fairly powerful feature of the telephone hybrid card, DTMF Detect. DTMF tones are the sounds made by the 12 buttons on any standard phone. A SoundWeb London can be told to listen for those sounds during a call and then respond to them like control commands. The only requirement is that you must have at least one telephone hybrid card or one Blue 102 in your system connected to a working analog phone line. Someone could be in the same building or even on the other side of planet Earth and he or she could pick up a landline, cell phone, or soft phone, dial the number of the analog phone line to which the SoundWeb London is connected, and when the SoundWeb London answers the call, either manually through a human operator or automatically through the auto answer feature, the caller can then use the 12 phone buttons to control the SoundWeb London system. For example, a SoundWeb London could respond to the code 123 star pound 000 123 567 by routing a specific microphone or perhaps even the caller's voice to a specific zone in the building. Another example, the sound of London could respond to the code star 7 by outputting a custom serial string to an AMX control system, which then responds to that serial string by shutting down the entire building. Now, perhaps it's a somewhat abstract way of thinking about things, but time itself can be a controller for SoundWeb London. Each SoundWeb London device has an internal calendar clock based on non-volatile memory, which means it will retain the correct time even if you power down the device for a while. You can use that calendar clock to automate things to happen on a predictable schedule. So, for example, every weekday at 8 a.m., turn the system on, and at 9 p.m., turn the system off. And if support for network time protocol is required within a SoundWeb London system, this can be accomplished by adding a SoundWeb Contrio server to the system. The SoundWeb Contrio server will support NTP, among many other features. Please see the product page for the SoundWeb Contrio server for more details on that forthcoming device. Now, this one too is a bit abstract, but an audio signal itself, whether it's coming in through a local input card or network audio ports, the amplitude and really also even the frequency characteristics of that signal can be used to control a sound of London. For example, let's say you have a standalone tone generator with a volume knob on it, which obviously changes just the amplitude of that tone. Let's say the tone can exit an analog output on that tone generator. So you could feed that tone to a SoundWeb London analog input and you can use it to control, for example, the level of a microphone, which also happens to be connected to that same SoundWeb London. So in kind of a strange way, this means that you're now using that physical volume knob on the tone generator to control the volume of a microphone. So that's it for the SoundWeb London hardware overview. If you made it all the way through, congratulations. You now understand the hardware capabilities of 19 devices, 6 cards, and 22 different types of controllers. If you're a system integrator, contractor, or just someone looking to learn more about an extremely powerful set of audio tools, I recommend taking the next steps towards official SoundWeb London training and certification. Those steps should be detailed clearly on our website. Thanks for taking your time to watch these videos. I'm Kevin Brown for BSS Audio, signing off.